Hello and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. Today I'm working on a 12 by 12 page using a, this same color palette that you may have seen before if you saw some of my recent videos. This is a color palette that I came up with using the Coolers app and I will link in some cards right now. The first layout that I made using this color scheme was called Farewell. And then in a few minutes, I will link the second layout that I used using, that I created using this color scheme, which was called Swing Time. Now for this layout, I want to use this stamp set from Studio Calico. It's, it's a brunch themed stamp set. I don't know the name of it because Studio Calico doesn't put their names on their stamp sets, but it's a Studio Calico stamp set that has a brunch theme and it's not terribly old, so it might still be available in their shop. So if you saw my farewell layout, the process video for that one, in that one I showed how I used the Coolers app to come up with this color scheme in the first place. Basically these colors were picked from another photo taken at the same resort. So I noticed when I scrapbooked that one that there were several other photos that had a similar color scheme in them. So I took two of those aside and stored it away with my scraps from that layout. So all of these supplies that you see over to the left, they're all scraps from my supplies. Many of them are very, very old scraps. And so this is a scrap based uh, use up your stash kind of a layout, which most of my layouts are these days. Now I have a piece of craft cardstock here and it's a cooler craft. You can get orangey craft and you can get this more neutral, cool craft. And this one is a cra is a cool one. And Stampin' Up! has two inks that are uh, that are crafty, craft-like, craft-colored-like. One of them is called Crumb Cake and the other one is called Sahara Desert. And I usually use Crumb Cake without even thinking about it, but as I reached for Crumb Cake, I saw that Sahara Desert looked pretty neutral as well. So I grabbed them both and did a little sample on the back side of this craft paper and decided that I liked Sahara Desert better. So it's just a little bit less orangey, which uh, works well for this page because there's not orange in it. It's more of a citrusy, um, it, it's more of a cool color palette with that really beautiful blue tone as well. So I am using that Sahara Desert ink and I'm basically stamping little brunch and breakfast themed icons all over my background paper to basically create my very own DIY patterned paper. I'm just making sure that some of them go off the page every here and there because it just makes it look more natural. And uh, every time I do the top, every time I try to make one go off the top of the page, it's because of the angle I'm sitting, it doesn't go off the top. <laughs> so there, I meant to make those pancakes go off the page and it didn't. So I'm going to have to actually stand up to do it there. I thought I would do that. And yeah, that one actually went off the page. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just filling in any gaps and one tip for this is to look away from the page and then look right back and that's when you'll see where the gaps are and then just look at all the icons that are around that and choose one that isn't one of those to go in that gap. And you have to stop somewhere so I'm stopping right around here. Uh, here's something that I, I'm just demonstrating for my patrons. I do real time process videos for my patrons. And so, whoops, this is all out of screen. I'm sorry about that. Anyhow, I was just demonstrating how you could just selectively ink up this bowl. It's like a bowl of hot cereal, like porridge or oatmeal. Uh, you could just selectively ink it, but that would be tricky and it would take a long time where I'm doing repeated inking, uh, stamping here. So I've just decided to cut it apart and I did just cut it very carefully. I bent it inside out so I could really see where the bowl ended and the words began. So I could cut right in that little divide and that little bowl of oatmeal is perfect because I actually ate oatmeal a few of the days. I don't typically eat oatmeal when I'm at home, but when someone else has made it, if I'm at a hotel or something, I will sometimes have oatmeal. I don't know what it is. It's not that hard to make, but I just have a, like a mental block for making my own oatmeal. And so I'm just demonstrating that when you put it back together again, you can't even tell that it's cut. 
So I will put this stamp set away now because I'm pretty much done with it, although it is going to become some inspiration for a potential title at some point. I'm going to leave it on my desk and we'll see where we go from there. So here we have one piece of DIY patterned paper with a craft. I, I love this neutral background because it's going to provide a really good contrast to all of the bright colors that I intend to use on this spread. So with this assortment of papers that I have left, so I've already used, the, so these are were already scraps, plus I've already used this set of scraps for two previous layouts. So I'm really down to very few things and very small shapes left of these papers. So I don't even have a mat left for the <laughs> for this photo in the navy blue because I think I, I might have matted both of my previous layouts with the navy blue as well. I really love the boldness that that gives, especially working with such bright, almost neon colors with the citrusy greens and yellows. I'm grabbing my Splendid collection from Paige Evans. Now this is another scrap kit that I have. It's actually not a scrap kit, it's just a supply kit for another color scheme that I picked using the, uh, not the Coolers app this time, but using Sarah Renee Clark's color palettes, color catalog. I just had to double check that I knew that the restaurant that we were going to every day was called El Limon, and I was pretty sure that that meant the lemon, but I had a moment of wondering, wait, does it mean the lemon or the lime? So I just had to double check, and I just asked Siri the answer, and she told me. So I had a feeling that there were some lemons in the Splendid collection from Paige Evans, and yes, there are. Uh, I realized that when I was scrapping my last project, I noticed some lemons in the die cut set. So some of these little pieces of chipboard are coming out of the out of the sheet. So I just used some washi tape there. There's the lemon that I had seen the last time I was scrapping. Made a mental note that when I scrapbook the next picture, which is of us at the restaurant, I better use that. So I've picked that out. The green picks up really nicely on the green in Scott's shirt, which is not necessarily part of my color palette, but I'm going to use it as an accent color. And for that light blue that's in the, the color palette, I'm really just going to allow the sky to be really the only light blue element. It shows up in one or two tiny little places, but for the most part, the sky is going to represent that light blue. And so it'll only be in the photo. It won't be in any of my embellishments. Now I'm going to, I'm, I'm just de-sticking my chipboard pieces by, I'm, at first they're, they're, they're not very sticky to begin with. In fact, I almost always have to use extra glue on them, but I'm using, I used my hand for a little bit, but my hands are not all that oily right now. It's winter time here. So I just... Uh, touched them on my t-shirt a couple of times just to get some lint on them so that they're nice and not sticky. That way they're not going to stick to things that I don't want them to stick to as I audition them around my page. So I know I want to use those die cut and chipboard lemons and, and oranges. And I know that I want to matte this photo in the navy blue. As you can see, I'm just piecing together two pieces of navy blue. This is the exact same cardstock. It was just cut up in a weird way that didn't leave me a four by six piece left. So I just uh, piece them together like that and you can't even really see. Oh, I like the back side of that one. This is a Studio Calico, that really bright green. It's a Studio Calico pattern paper. It's reading as a solid, but it has a very small dotted print on it. Now, I would like to use both of these chipboard pieces together in such a way that the orange is covered up. And I'll do the same with the die cut pieces. Kind of, it basically makes it look like it splays and covers a full corner instead of just covering a part of a corner. Because I'm cutting chipboard, I'm just taking out my heavy duty scissors and then I will piece those together and I'll piece them together even better later. But for now, they're just, I just want to be able to see how they look. So this is how this one is turning out. I'm putting the die cut pieces, which are larger up in the top left hand corner. And that's because there's just ceiling there. So it's okay if I cover that. 
I didn't want the larger pieces to be on the top right hand corner because there's beautiful trees and sky there and the view is part of what we loved about this restaurant and so I really didn't want that large lemon to be covering up the view so put it over here and that way it only covers up the ceiling. And then that smaller piece in the diagonal bottom corner will make this a diagonal layout basically. So here I'm just thinking I my idea is that I will either say El Limon, which is the name of the restaurant, as a caption using these small yellow letter stickers from Doodlebug Designs. They're called Alphabet Soup and I love them. First, I'm just going to place this here because I, I've kind of made up my mind about this. So let's go ahead and commit. I, I'm sort of making decisions as I go. And once I've made a decision, I like to just kind of take care of it so that I don't forget what I was doing. So here's me piecing this together. Basically, I want to make like a jigsaw puzzle out of it. So I just traced where I want it to be. Before I traced it, I actually shifted it down a little bit so that I'm cutting the black line where I drew so that that black line won't remain on the leftover piece. I just needed a little smaller pair of scissors just to get the little fuzzies out of the corner of that cut that I made. And now those two piece together very, very well. I hope that you can see it from the video, but I think I'm going to zoom in at some point. So I will glue that one and I'm only putting glue where the photo is so that this whole thing is movable still. It's not connected to the bottom. There you go. So I just slowed this down so you can see it, how it, how it turned out up close. It's pieced together like a little jigsaw there. And then I will just put something else on top of it so that it's not so obvious that those two pieces don't really belong together but it gives me a nice flat surface. It, it looks fine the way it is. Really, if you were, you'd have to be looking pretty close to notice that those, that, that it was actually two pieces, but I am going to put a little something on top of it just to make it look even better. I felt like the top was missing a little something and I, and I, I want to kind of go with this splaying kind of an element as opposed to having something sticking up into the corner to make that into a triangular kind of an embellishment. Don't want it the way that I had it a second ago. I want it pointing downwards, not pointing upwards. And I really want to cover most of those flowers because they don't fit with my color scheme. So I want this to be mostly just those citrusy greens and yellows. And it's okay if a few other, sh other colors are showing, but mostly the greens and yellows is what I want. So because I added extra leaves on the top, I want to add extra leaves on the bottom as well. Those, those really pretty delicate green looking leaves. So I'm just going to chop down this sticker. There was only one other sticker that had those green leaves in it, but it had it in two places. So I'm going to uh, play around a little bit with how I want these to be. At first I thought I'd put one over on that side and one down in this little corner peeking out behind the, the lemon and the other, the other leaves. I'm using my embossing tool to de-stick the stickers there. If you see me rubbing something against the backside of my stickers, that's what I'm doing. And then I decided to change it because this piece is bigger, so it makes sense that it would be in this bigger hole here, the little gap between the lemon and the leaves. Then we'll put that one over there. The more I looked at it, the more I actually didn't like it there. So I decided to layer it beside the other one. So both of those two stickers with the green leaves, the little sticker pieces, are beside each other. That basically makes it be one clump of those green leaves over on, the, on this bottom part. Now, I know that whether it's going to be my main title or a caption, I know that I want to use these yellow Doodlebug Designs uh, letter stickers. These are alphabet soup letter stickers. I got them at Crop and Create at the at the store that was present there. Uh, so I'm going to spell out El Limon and I am going to put an accent over the O but I'll put that at the very end because it can't 
sit on my thickers tool here. I'm using my thickers alignment ruler. You can use any thin ruler in this way. The thickers alignment ruler is good because it has all these little lines on it that help you. It's got a centering and it's also just has little, little lines close to the edge so that you can line your letters up really easily. Now, as I'm making this, it feels like the inside of it is looking really nice and interesting, but the outside is looking kind of boring. I don't mat all of my paper of, of my projects, but I feel like this one in particular needs to be matted because that craft background is just so plain in contrast to how vivid and bright and energetic the the layers are on this page and so now I'm just kind of thinking about I was thinking about doing a bigger title one of them that says breakfast brunch is breakfast without an alarm and I decided to not do that because I didn't have any real good way to um, fit that size of words on this page and so I decided to go with El Limon being the title not that big longer um phrase and so I grabbed my yellow 12 by 12 papers Ooh, look at that I already sewed on that that must have been something I was going to use and change my mind at some point point. and uh, so I just changed my angle there so that you can see me shopping my stash for a really good citrusy oh wow as soon as I saw that one I was done looking because that one it's a Scraptastic Kit Club exclusive paper from back in the Scraptastic days and oh, isn't that just perfect I was looking for two things I was looking for something citrus yellow or green or both and I was looking for something bold and nothing like that bold diagonal stripe like those are one of the more bold things that you can do with your outside edges I love those diagonal stripes for my outside edges now I did think that it needed a little something else to add even more boldness so I'm actually going to mat my whole project with a piece of this navy blue cardstock this happens to be basil it's not exactly the same but it's very very similar to the blue that I've already matted my photo in and I just want a little sliver of that so when I cut down this, I usually cut down a half of an inch on two adjacent sides when I'm cutting down a background paper like this, unless if it's something centered, then I'll take a quarter inch off of every side. But this paper is not, doesn't have a centered or symmetrical kind of pattern on it. So I can just take, I took a little bit more than a half of an inch, actually just a little bit less than a full inch is what I ended up taking off of those two, of those two adjacent sides. And that gives me some room to do some matting, some extra matting that I don't usually do on my pages. I'm going to put a very thin navy blue mat around this craft paper and look at how that makes it pop. So I spent a lot of time on this background and it's very well themed with my with the story that I'm telling here about having breakfast at this restaurant. And so I want to you know, make sure that I do it justice. I needed to take just a tiny sliver of paper off of the edge. And this caterpillar uh, crop cutter is way better than my Stampin' Up! one at getting a tiny little sliver. So that's what I switched to there. Wow. Look at that. Oh, I miss the Scraptastic Kit Club. Oh, I wish they would come back. I would buy everything they made if they came back. Anyhow, there they are. Love, love, love that paper. And I'm going to just snuggle my title in amongst the foliage that's coming off of the bottom right hand corner. And the design element here is proximity. So I want these things to be close to one another so that it kind of is one continuous you know, the photo, the embellishments, the title, and the and the journaling is all going to be connected to one another. Just adding a little, there was a little dash in this font, so I thought I'd use it as the accent on the letter O. And I'm just going to tidy up a little bit and get rid of my 
my scraps and I'm thinking about where am I going to do my journaling. I could journal right there. There's no stamps there so it's it's a good spot for my journaling just <laughs> showing how that background turned out. I'm really pr proud of that background. I liked it a lot. So uh, I need to put something on this die cut to, to cover over the little the little seam between the two the two chipboard pieces. And at first I picked out this little flower. It blends in with the flowers that are already on the die cut, but then I decided that adding a butterfly was better. I like to add something living. I mean, plants are living too, but I like to add a little critter of some sort whenever I can to a page like this. It just adds a bit of dynamic energy to it. And I'm just positioning it so that that butterfly is looking. Oh, I really like how it looks with that flower there. I did move it because I didn't have another element. I couldn't repeat that up in the top, but boy, that looked nice there. I'm regretting. I wish I had left it there, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, so the butterfly is looking down towards the, the title and the journaling will be there as well. I'm using my color scheme to pick my, my marker for my journaling. What I used was my Faber-Castell Pit Pen. This is Indanthrene Blue, Indanthrene Blue 247. This was given to me by our international student's mom. She sent us a little package that included a few crafty supplies, including a set of these Faber-Castell pit pens, which I adore. And this blue is my new favorite pen. I love it. So the other thing I'm showing here is my journaling template. I often use my hot off the press journaling template, which is a very old product that you can't get anymore. So I thought I would feature this journaling template, which you can still get. So this was bundled with a bunch of bullet journal stencils. You can get it on Amazon and uh, those little bundles of bullet journal stencils have like you get maybe 10 or 12 of them in a set. They're not super, super cheap, but they're also not terribly expensive. They might be, I don't know, like maybe $15 in, in Canada. So maybe more like 10 for the United States. Um, and they come with a bunch of shapes. Like you can just kind of look at what's included and look for one that has journaling lines like this because it's a nice way to have this product since that hot off the press journaling template that has all the other lines for journaling. You can't really get that anymore. And to be honest, I never use the circular or spiral or heart shaped or whatever those specialty shapes are. I never use those. I only ever use the lines. So the lines are you can get in this format on Amazon. So check that out. Now, I, I, I looked around for the link for them and I couldn't find, I couldn't find it anymore as a current thing, but sometimes things are available in the US that aren't available in Canada anymore. So, so definitely have a look at, if you search on Amazon under bullet journal stencils, you should find a whole variety of things. Yeah, so now I'm taking these freckled fawn enamel shapes that I got for free with an order recently. And I've been using these in these layouts because they're the perfect color scheme, except for that pinky color that doesn't fit with this particular pa color palette. But I put them this way and now I'm gonna have a couple of changes of heart here. I decided to um, move them around so that there's three in each. I had four in one and two in the other. I just decided to go with three in each. Of course, three is a good, a good number for from a design perspective threes will give you a visual triangle and whatnot so now my very last step is to go through and look for any gaps in my background paper and just add any additional little shapes that I needed so there was a little bit of a gap here so I added a toaster so that it looked like it was underneath of those layers and now I'm going to add another shape here in the bottom it just looks like I need something else here 
So I'm going to put pancakes and I immediately regret it because the pancakes are literally right above the croissant. I wish that I had maybe pushed it over to the right a little bit. I'm going to put another little one right here. These things don't have to be perfect. If I didn't point that out to you, you probably wouldn't have noticed that the croissant and the pancakes are lined up. So uh, try not to be too hard on yourself when you're doing something like this. This is a whole piece of pattern paper that I got for maybe not free. I mean, the the craft cardstock costs something but you can get craft cardstock for pretty cheap like pennies a page right so with a little bit of ink and some stamps in my stash I was able to make this into a pretty decent background patterned paper so now what I'm talking about here is that what I think really makes this page work is the blue matting that happens both on the outside edge and also around the photo. It really draws your eye and helps you to see what it is that I want you to see, which is the photo. And uh, here's just the close-ups of this one. Before I share the photos, just a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen, so big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all my process videos and real-time unedited versions of my videos, as well as a monthly live stream, behind the scenes videos of my room and my process and Zoom calls and all sorts of fun things. So uh, check it out if you are interested in getting any of those perks. Memberships start as low as $1 per month and and you're welcome to just join for a month and then bow out if you'd like. So thanks to you also for watching all the way to the end. Feel free to check out one of these other videos from my channel. I'll be back with another scrapbooking process video soon. But in the meantime, take care and have a really great scrappy week.